Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, now, I've been sharing with us this month on tithes and offering. And because there, is, there are things the Spirit of God wants to communicate with us. And that's why he led us into this topic. And so I ask that you listen attentively. But before we go on today, can we release our faith as we make requests for our daily bread are you ready join me right now say father i demand for my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god now whenever we declare or demand this believe you will receive and you will have it praise god thank you holy spirit you remember we we were reading from the book of malachi malachi thank you lord jesus malachi chapter 3 and we began to read from verse from verse from verse 6, when God began to say, let me just do a quick recap. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. And I told you, keep this in mind. This word, gone away from my ordinances. Keep this in mind because it's the biggest thing in this whole subject of tithes and offering that we're going to be looking at now he says return to me and i'll return to you says the lord of hosts so god says you have turned away from my ordinances now i urge you come back to me so that i will come back to you and then we'll begin to relate together and then he asked the question how do we come back to you then he asked will a man rob god now take note, God literally said, is it possible for a man to rob, to steal from me? So, and then he says, how have we robbed you? Then he clearly says, in tithes and offerings. Now think about it. He said, first of all, I've told you this many times. You've got to believe that the Bible is true. When, when I say the Bible is true, I mean everything you read here was said it happened you understand what i mean but what i mean by that so if now this statement for example is a communication between god and the prophets so god is asking now will a man rob god and god says but you have robbed me and like is it possible to rob god he said yes you did in tithes and offerings now take note he used the word plural when he says tithes and then he used the word plural when he says offerings. Now, here is the mistake we make. Titan in itself and offerings, these are specific things that God demanded from his people. For God to say, you robbed me in these two things, then it's something you better think properly about and like okay why would god say we rob i thought i thought offerings was supposed to be a free will thing now if something is free will then one cannot one will never be right or one cannot be right to say you have stolen what you were supposed to give to me freely it's your choice if you want to give you give if you don't want to give you don't give i can't come to you and say you stole what you intended in your mind to give to me. It doesn't work that way. See that now? So, but would God have been wrong to have said, you robbed me? No, of course. Now, that's to let you know that tithing is not a free will giving. Then the offerings he's referring to, because now there are several offerings listed in scriptures. Now, um, theologians or bible scholars have been able to summarize all those 
um, offerings into five different groups of offerings. I think the bond offering, the, the peace offering, the um, grain offering, the reparation offering, and then there's one other offering. Now they, they listed this all the different offerings that God commanded into these five groups. Now, why, why all these offerings? And you see, if you study all the offerings that God has given or God commanded them to give, you, you are going to notice the difference in there. Now, there are some offerings that are um, triggered by your misgivings or your inactions or your wrong actions. See, so um, guilt offering, for example, if you feel guilty that you've done something, you bring an offering to the Lord. Now, that's one kind of offering. Now, that one happens when you do something wrong. For example, the sin offering. See, you sin against God or the, the, the one they offer, the high priest offers every year, see, for the sins of the people. Now, that one is because um, sin was in view. So if you take away sin, that offering will no longer be needed. See that now? Now, so that was not a free will um, offering that's an offering you give as penalty for your action or inaction or wrong action praise god so that's the offering you give then you come to the grain offering now the grain offering is the uh, is also classified into different kinds of uh, there are different ways you give the grain offering now the grain offering has to do with your harvest and and your prosperity so it's a thanksgiving offering now it sounds like a free will offering that you give in honor to the lord but you see under that grain offering is where the first fruit offering comes under the first fruit offering now like i said there are several kinds of offering so there's the ones that you you give because of um what you have done so you know you're, you're coming to like uh redeem yourself or you're coming to to say i'm sorry you know to god so you bring an offering and all those ones then, then you have the green offering that's the one you you bring to god with thanksgiving in your heart so there's the harvest you give you give when you have a harvest and all that now under those offerings when when you separate them you will find the first fruit offering now the first fruit offering is the offering you give in honor to the lord you give it in honor to the lord now god actually demanded for this first fruit offering he demanded for it now be careful in your study when you find god demanding for something so the first fruit offering was demanded so god commanded the children of israel now notice in 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 demanding for the first first fruit offering he told them when you enter into the land that i'm taking you to it's a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It's a land that I've already blessed. So God gave them this idea that you are not supposed to go into that land to labor. I want you to understand this. So you get the meaning of this. You are not supposed to go into that land to labor. God said, look, that land, I have made that land and is already flowing with milk and honey. But then God says, when you come into the land and you receive the first harvest, the first thing you need to do, the first thing you must do is to take an offering of the first harvest and you present it to the Lord. Now, why did God command that? Now, if you understand something about God, God was speaking and then one time he says, look, if I was hungry, I would not tell you. 
Number two, God is not hungry to say, I, I, I need food, let me go down to earth to eat their food. No, sir. And sometimes it's good you think, it's good you reason. Why did he now demand these offerings? First and foremost, I want you to understand this. The reason for all the offerings that God gave to the children of Israel is one thing, that they recognize and acknowledge him. That they recognize and acknowledge him. I want you to take note of that. Now, let me show you something. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Then one of the scribes, verse, I'm reading from verse 28. Then one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, now this scribe came and asked Jesus, he said, which is the first commandment of all? This man had what now Jesus was have, having his sessions with the scribes and, and, and Pharisees, so they were asking him questions, he was answering. So this very intelligent man, I, 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 I believe, was watching this whole thing, and then he, he, when he realized that, okay, maybe they are done with him, he, he decided to step in. So he asked Jesus, which is the first commandment of all? Now, he wasn't just saying which is the first, it was actually which is the best commandment of all. Now, then Jesus, Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second, like it, is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Take note of what Jesus answered this man. This guy asked him, what's the best commandment? Jesus said, this is it. The first thing God gave. Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then he says, the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, there is no other commandment greater than this. Now watch what this scribe now said to Jesus. So the scribe said to him, well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but He. And to love Him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices did you hear that they were not talking about offerings and sacrifices but this guy asked jesus a question right? and jesus answered very well and then when jesus answered very well the guy thought to, thought to him i told you this man was very intelligent and when jesus answered he felt wow this is a very intelligent answer and then he made a statement said look and truly is the best is the best of it all because to God is one. There is no God beside him, right? Okay. If there is no God beside him, then to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself is the most important thing. It's far more important than any burnt offerings and sacrifices that you will have to give to God. You see that? Now look at what Jesus said. Verse 34, now when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Praise God, I love that. Now, he, Jesus heard this man's speech. And you think, he will say, what, what's wrong with you? Oh, so you're asking me so that I will not be offering sacrifices to God. No, Jesus heard what his analysis and said, man, you are not far from the kingdom of God 
of heaven. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Praise God. Because now, it means, why did Jesus say you're not far? Because you have the understanding that will open your hearts to the gospel so easily. You have the understanding that will open your hearts to God so easily. What's that understanding? That the offerings itself is not what God is interested in. I want you to understand this. The offerings, the giving of offerings itself is not what God is really after. But there is a reason for the offerings. Now, just think and reason for, your, for yourself. Do you think when they, when they slaughter bulls and those animals, God will look at those blood and say, mm, I will accept this blood for their sin. Do you, do you think the blood of animals truly can wash away sin? Of course, you know, it's not true. It cannot wash away sin. So why was God demanding all those offerings from them? Why was God demanding the, the grain offerings? Why was it demanding all those things? Why was God demanding all those offerings from them? I'll tell you, number one, one reason God was demanding all those, demanded all those offerings from them is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, how? That they will acknowledge Him as God. Now, that's the most important thing. Now, here, when Jesus said, to love Him with all your heart, with all your soul, what's He saying? Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. You remember in Proverbs, it tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. Then he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now see the relationship here. You acknowledge him in all your ways and then he takes responsibility in directing your parts now that's the relationship that god created between him and man so every offering that god commanded was for this purpose that they acknowledge him now even when they sin when they do wrong all they need to do is to come to the place of acknowledgement lord I, I have, I've, 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 I've erred. I need your help. What are you acknowledging? You are acknowledging you need the help of God to exist, to live. So Lord, I, I made a terrible blunder. And so now the reason he commanded them to give the offerings, to take physical actions to show their guilt or so, their, their, their sorrow, in acknowledging him it's not the bulls in itself that god is smiling and say ah hmm, uh, angels can you perceive that smell oh i i i forgive their sin no sir it is the acknowledgement it is the acknowledgement please take note of this it is the acknowledgement that god is after now the problem God has had with the, the children of Israel and even till this day is this. They move their mind from the acknowledgement, which is the most important thing, and they move it to the activities. See that? They move it to the activities. So they begin to rate the activities more than the reason that God intended for those offerings, those sacrifices. You see? So now they are concerned about how many bulls they are going to kill and not realizing that the most thing, important thing God was looking at there is to say, ah, taking that bull, why are you taking that bull? Why are you sacrificing? Why are you giving that offering? Oh, I, I am doing it because I need God's help. So every time they give an offering, they expect an answer from the Lord. And that was the intention. Every time you give an offering, you're supposed to expect a response from the Lord. And that was how Cain and Abel, they 
knew easily who God approved between the two of them because God accepted Abel's offering and he did not accept Cain's offering. Now, how did they know? It means they didn't just offer it there and say, I've done my part, God, that you shall be. No, they did there as they gave the offering. They waited to see the reaction they are going to get from God. And Abel got the right reaction Cain did not get the reaction he was expecting. So you see that? So they knew. I want you to take what I'm teaching you very, very seriously. Because it will put to an end every question you have concerning all these things. Concerning tithes, concerning giving of offerings and all these things. It will surely put to an end to every confusion in your mind my time is up praise god we're going to continue tomorrow but i pray for you today that the spirit of god will guide your mind and your hearts in him and bring you to the place of rest that place of his full knowledge in jesus mighty name amen i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye